Oh, I see what you did there. Right. Um, good morning. We have got a very super brief panel, and unfortunately, we've only got 95 members of the panel to get through. <laughs> so I'm not sure we'll have enough content to cover. The topic of today's discussion is uh, what next for education? What does the future hold for education? There are a great many people who are employed as uh, futurists and, and, and fortune tellers and horoscope practitioners for education, but what do some of the most informed, articulate, and intelligent people on the Twitter sphere <laughs> think about what education holds and what it should hold? I've really tried to form this around two questions. What do you think is coming next in education? What are the next big things? Whether that be the next brain gym or the next Michael Gove, who knows? And also what you think the next thing should be for education, what the next future should be for education. So first of all, I'd like to introduce the panellists, if you can introduce yourselves with please. Hi, I'm Claire Seeley, head teacher of a primary school in Tahamlets. Hi, I'm Andrew, I teach maths. Uh, David Preston, CEO of the Teacher Development Trust. I like that that was just Andrew. Just Andrew. <laughs> <laughs> it's, like, it's like Madonna. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, you've made it when you've got a modern <laughs> um, I'm Tajani Wilkinson, and um, I'm a primary school teacher and uh, a blogger as well. Hello there, Mary Mount, um, independent school improvement person. <laughs> Sam Tomlinson, Director of Sheffield Institute of Education, and um, working for the blog. <laughs> <laughs> I like how everyone kind of stumbled over their job roles there. <laughs> and blogger, I'm not too sure. What do I actually do? And I'm Tom Bennett, professional nobody. Um, so the question I'd like to put to the panel is, first of all, it could take just two or three minutes to discuss what you think the next big thing in education is going to be, what's coming, and what you think it should be. So two or three minutes apiece, and then we'll open up to the audience to take some questions, okay? So, starting with David Weston. So I literally just said to him just before he started, so please don't start with me. Uh, uh, thanks, so far. So childish. Yeah. Um, what do I think is coming? So, uh, two things, what I think is coming, what do I think should be coming. Uh, first of all, we're going to start hearing more and more about the future about robotics, about AI. Politicians are going to start jumping on that more. They're going to start saying, oh, we need to get our children ready for the future for robotics. That whole thing is going to come back. We thought it was around kind of 10 years ago. It seems to have gone away for a bit. Genuinely, there's going to be loads more people saying our, our schools are not preparing our children for the future enough. We have to be ready for that. We have to know how to harness that and ride it. What I think should be coming is the notion of collective expertise. So we've got really good ideas in our system, but it's not connected up very well. How do we make sure that the best ideas in the system are available to everyone in the system? How do we make sure there are people who move around, grabbing good idea there, helping teachers learn it here? How do we find really good things and connect them through networks and resources and, dare I say, textbooks and things like that? How do we make sure we're sharing really good expertise around? So, number one, future shock is coming. We've got to be ready. Number two, I think we can solve that through better use of collective expertise. Wow, what a high bar that was. Let me pass you over to the equally high energy, Andrew. <laughs> Hi. Um, I think in the next year or two, we're entering a period where there's little central leadership from government. That there's not, education's just not a big issue for them at the moment or for the foreseeable future. And I think that has already had a knock on effect because we've had years where. There's so many big issues in education, and now there aren't big issues, it's all small issues. Like the, the, I mean, the biggest controversy um, the last few months was whether um, children in early years could sit at a table for 20 minutes. It, it's not the kind of debate we were having before. Um, and I think also because of that lack of leadership, there's more experiments, there's more schools doing their own things, and people telling each other what they're doing. Um, uh, the downside of that is also there's people with that who, knowing there's not um, any ideas that everyone's encouraged to do, are just thinking back to, well, what did I do five years ago? I'm going to present that as something new. Um, in terms of what should happen, I think we've got all these new structures and none of them are bedded in, and it would be nice if people could just see what was actually working. And there was, you know, people could agree on what was successful 
and learn from it. And I think the other thing um, that just doesn't seem to have changed in 15 years, well, yeah, I think it's about 15 years, um, which is management structures. The, a lot of schools, the way they're managed, it's still what they introduced when TLRs were introduced, and it hasn't changed at all. Um, and I think there's a lot of room for innovation there. Thank you. Claire? Hi, I think one thing that's going to happen, I think it's already beginning to happen, and I think it's going to be the next um, thing in terms of, dare I say, pedagogy, maybe I mean curriculum, anyway, one of those things, um, is that when I started training, when I started teaching a long time ago, um, and it's been the dominant paradigm ever since, is that you do whole texts, you approach things from the whole, that was more meaningful, um, rather than going for the real sort of nitty gritty, honing down, finding what the, the, the most basic thing was. And I think that we're really moving, starting to move away from that and looking at the, the, the sort of more direct instruction thing. I think that's beginning to bubble through now. And of course, I can't remember, Mr. Burton Maths, what's his book? What's his first name? Can't remember his name. Craig, Craig Burton's brilliant book um, on how I wish I'd taught maths, really looking at maths right down, trying to find absolutely what's What's the maths actually made of? What's the most basic thing they need to know and teaching it step by step by step? And then the other thing is, on the other side, of looking at English, the book The Writing Revolution, and really said that instead of teaching these great big genres and great big pieces of writing and getting kids to write lots, how about let's start with a sentence, let's get, that, let's get that really right, let's really craft that. And I think that moving that paradigm from doing big things and then trying to fit the technical in to really getting the technical stuff right from the beginning is going to be a big shift that's going to take time, but I think that's where the paradigm's going to go. And also all the school's going to go broke, and it's going to be like the NHS. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what the educational equivalent is of, tro of um, you know, patients on trolleys, but whatever that is, that's going to happen too. <laughs> Um, yeah, what Claire said, <laughs> essentially. Um, yeah, no, I think um, the great eruption is going to be in primary school, uh, particularly in early years, because it's going to have to start, really going to have to be some more innovation.